Samyang and Rokinon, which is one and the same, have made a ton of amazing lenses over the course of the last couple of years. They started out really with manual focused lenses and then eventually they got into autofocus and now they're innovating in new ways that are unexpected and I am excited about it. In today's video, I'm taking a look at the VAF series, which stands for Video Autofocus. Basically, it's a line of full-frame cine lenses that have autofocus and some very cool other features. And while most reviews are going to be focused on getting these lenses on a full-frame camera, I'm gonna focus this review on how these lenses perform on my Sony FX30 with its APS-C sensor uh, and I think this is a combination that is meant to be and I'll show you guys that here in a moment but first let's take a look at how these things come packaged. So this is a trio of lenses the 24 T 1.9, the 35 millimeter T 1.9 and the 75 millimeter T 1.9. These lenses come in nice gray and black boxes inside there is some padding and instruction manual and the lens plastic rear lens cap and a tension fit plastic front lens cap. First impressions these lenses are unbelievably light and compact in fact all three Three lenses weigh the exact same and are the exact same size. Each one is 282 grams on my scale and measures about three inches in overall length. The design is unique and I quite like it. The body is made out of plastic mostly but has a gunmetal metallic front element that has electronic connections. More on that later. There's a nice little red accent ring that's tucked under the focus ring as well which I'm a fan of. Starting at the rear there is a metal lens mount with electronic connections. The cutout is large again as these are designed for full frame Sony mirrorless cameras. There's a nice rubber gasket here and there are several other rubber gaskets throughout the lens body for weather resistance. Moving up there are some lens specs, an M1 or M2 switch which in stock form decides whether the ring on the body controls the focus or the aperture. There's a focus hold button, minimum focus markings, and a Samyang logo. The focus ring is good but not excellent. It's not mechanical so I'm surprised that it isn't smoother than it is. The resistance is okay, but there's a little bit of plastic noise here. And then we come to that metal ring at the front and it is where the lenses are labeled on both sides. Around the front, the lens elements are all different. Large convex element on the 75 millimeter and a concave smaller element on the 35. The real surprise for me is that they got a 24 millimeter T1.9 to be this compact. It's impressive. On the FX30, these lenses look like they were designed to be together. The body of the FX30 is nice gray and the darker material metallic silver on the front of these Samyang lenses just makes everything look so amazing. And the size is perfect. It really makes for a nice and light, good looking setup. And the best part is the built-in tally lights. These lenses have two tally lights, each one on the front and one on the sides. They glow green when the camera is on and red when recording. And on the FX30, when you are recording, that means you have a total of six indicators that you are in fact recording. So you have the square around the back of the screen that's glowing red. You have the tally light up on top here. You have the light around the record button right there. Another tally light right here on the top of the camera. And then you have one here on the lens and one on the front of the lens. So in total, again, six indicators that you are in fact recording. Hopefully you won't have to wonder next time you are if you have a setup like this. Anyway, let's see what these lenses are capable of doing with the Sony FX30. Here are a couple of sample videos. All of these are straight out of the camera. No post-processing, no color grading, nothing. These are straight video files from the FX30. Ready, set, go.
Well, that was perhaps a little bit more dramatic than it needed to be, but these three lenses did great. Now let's start with the important bit. As a set, the colors from these three lenses are all uniform. Again, this montage had no color grading at all, so everything that you are seeing is straight out of the camera, and I swapped lenses on the fly a lot during this shoot. And doing this was quite easy because even on a small gimbal, which is normally very sensitive to slight changes in weight and center of gravity, there was nothing to worry about with these lenses because they are all the same exact size and weight. Autofocus performance was excellent on the 24 and the 35. I would say excellent 90% percent of the time on the 75 millimeter, but on occasion it did this thing where it just couldn't decide what to focus on, so it hunted around. That being said, the 75 millimeter was still my favorite lens because of how close it got you to everything, and then the subject separation and resulting bouquet were excellent. As far as sharpness, these lenses are very sharp in the center of the frame. Wide open, the corners are good, but not quite as sharp as the centers, but that's okay. If you are looking for a technically perfect lens, this Cine lens set is not for you. Comparing the 35mm to the Sigma 30mm, both wide open, what we see is this confirmed. The center is nicely sharp, the corners are okay, but not quite as sharp as the center, and in the case of both the 24 and the 35, there is some vignetting which is odd, but the corners do brighten up when you stop down. In terms of flare, there is some noticeable flare when you point the lens into a bright source of light. When there is something less intense, the flare is better controlled, and it can be used in cinematic ways, so I'd say it's good overall. Barrel distortion on the 24 and the 35mm is well controlled with in-camera corrections turned on. The 75mm looks nice and flat as well, so no problems there. But then we get to chromatic aberration, and that's where the small size size of these lenses really starts to show some compromises. There's a bit of green and purple fringing against bright contrasting lines. It's unfortunate, but it is there, and it shows up in the center of the frame on the wide angles, and it's particularly strong when you are close to your subject. But the other problem is that it's not consistent across the lenses. The 35 millimeter seem to have more than the 24 and the 75, which is just a shame. You can stop the lenses down, and that does help, but I was hoping for a little better control of that fringing at least wide open. But that still isn't the biggest problem. The piece de resistance of these three lenses is something that only matters when it comes to cinema lenses, and that is focus breathing. I tested this with the 24mm and it was okay, not bad, but when I tested this with the 35mm and 75mm, I had to confirm again that I hadn't mounted a zoom lens on my camera by accident. It's pretty strong, a lot of movement, yeah. Overall, these lenses are quite unique. They are built well, they have cool features that I haven't seen on a lens before. The tally lights, the electronic connection on the front, great design, small compact bodies that are fast at T1.9, all the same size, same colors. There's a lot to like here, but I feel like Samyang could have gone a step further, step or two further really, and made them more cinema-esque versus just kind of basic lenses with a little bit of cinema attributes. In my eyes, they are great and definitely worth checking out, but what would have put them over the top is if they had added or fixed three things. Number one, a dedicated aperture ring. Number two, a focus ring with hard stops and markings. And number three, a focus ring with real gears for motors, not these shallow pitch gears. Those three things would have made these some serious cinema lenses. And of course, if they had tidied up the chromatic aberration and the focus breathing, that would even be icing on top. The problem is, I don't think that they could have done that with the small size and weight. That is the compromise that had to be made. Once you start adding all of this extra stuff, the lenses wouldn't be 3 inches long and wouldn't weigh 282 grams anymore. They might be double the size and the weight and probably double the price too. And this is where my jaw hit the floor because I'm wrapping up this video, I'm just doing a little bit of quick research online and I come across this. And I don't know if it's real or if it's some sort of horrible joke, but it looks like the answer to most of my complaints. Okay, I just found it on the Samyang website. It is $3.99 on pre-order and it fits a 95 millimeter matte box, but there's a 10% off code, maybe, so that's just cool. And that is just another thing that makes these lenses so exciting. The ability for Samyang to develop 
accessories and add-ons to these things for the infinite future. Who knows? They can come out with anamorphic adapters for the front of these. They can come out with ND filters that are swappable. I don't know for the front of these. There's a lot of potential things that they could launch to make these lenses even better than they are right now. And this is just the beginning. Samyang has two more lenses, a 45 and a 20 millimeter already planned for release later this year. So that will make this a five lens lineup, all the same size and weight, which is impressive. I have no idea how they're going to make a 20 millimeter T 1.9 this small and light, but I can't wait for the opportunity to check that lens out. So in conclusion, if you shoot Sony in 2023, well, you are pretty much spoiled for choice when it comes to buying lenses. And these three lenses have made your choice that much more interesting as well. I can't wait to see what they come up with next as far as accessories for these things. It's an exciting thing for sure. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are down in the comment section below. Stay tuned for more. A lot of exciting things coming up. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.